Praise the Lord. Thank you, brothers and sisters. We thank you for those who we have live. We're grateful to have live today our media director, was Joe King, and have Minister RV here in our live service. We've been gone for, for almost three weeks now, but we are back to our Bible study. We'll continue to have it and continue to be blessed with the book, focusing on this kingdom. Uh, kingdom God, Kim, uh, the, the, our writer, Dr. Evans uh, from Dallas, is, his, 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 his thing is focusing on God's kingdom. He, he writes book about the kingdom woman, the kingdom man. And here he's, he got this book called uh, Kingdom Focus. And we are, we are here, we are back, we've been back, and uh, we ask for your patience as we readjust uh, for the teaching. We been, took a break one week, got busy with something else another week, but we are certainly glad to be back. <clears throat> and to bless you, last time we left you, if you go back and you see that we went from, to the shift. And uh, what the shift is about, I know you get excited about hearing that word, the shift. All of us need to shift in our churches and shift in our spiritual life. Uh, but the writer is talking about shifting from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Uh, he, he started off by saying that it was the New Testament which introduced the new covenant of grace of Jesus Christ. We were talking about from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant, the covenant that was made with, Abraham, with uh, Moses uh, had become, as we said here in this lesson, had become obsolete because of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 8 and 13, it shows where it becomes obsolete, and he said that a new covenant that I give to you and that, that, that the old one, now that it's, it has decay and wax old, it's not that the covenant that has been written had wax old and decay. It's just that God moved for his people from the old to the new. The covenant of grace, from the covenant of the law to the covenant of grace. This is where God, this is where we are now. Bible says that by, by the works of the law, Nobody is justified before God. He says so in Romans 3 and 20. I know I'm throwing some scriptures at you right away. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law, the, by the law is the knowledge of sin. What simply is put? Simply is putting that the old law, the law, the old covenant made you realize just what sin is. It tells you. The Ten Commandments, God tells you. You know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we studied last week, all week long, when the Association of Churches about the, the two greatest commandments. And, uh, and one of them is to love God, and the other one is that to love your neighbor. These were commandments that, were, that they asked Jesus about. The Ten Commandments, same way. You already know what God calls sin. And that's what the covenant made us realize that sin, what our sin is, it gives you the knowledge of sin, but it was required of people. It was required of the people to keep the covenant. But God really, God seen that he already knew it. He wanted them to see it. He wanted us to see that we could not keep the covenant. Because within, within that, there is certain, there are certain rules and laws. Uh, the covenant, the rule, one of them that we got to remember, it's, it's brought out in the New Testament. Uh, any man that sin, uh, the, the penalty of sin is death. But God changed it and put at the end, here come the covenant of grace, where he says the gift of God is eternal life. Let me tell you about this. The shift is from the Old to the New Testament. So let me tell you what's happening within here. In that next part, it says, it talks about godlessness. Uh, godlessness is linked to Jesus Christ. Here is our assignment. Our assignment is to become, that we ought to become more like Jesus. 
This is possible because God's command to us is to be holy as he is holy. You find it in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. It talks about uh, uh, being holy. Do you, why are we ought to be holy? It says so that, that you are holy, so, 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 so God is holy, so we ought to be holy. And watch this, in all matter of conversation. Then it jumps to verse, uh, verse 16 because it is written. Be ye holy. That's what, that is something that God gives us as a command for you to be holy because he is holy. Dr. 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 Uh, Dr. Evans calls, talks about the mystery. He talks about the hope of glory. And he talks about being filled with Jesus Christ. He calls this thing, it becomes, to be holy becomes a mystery. Amen. He, he, he also came, watch what Jesus Christ came, that we may be holy. And, uh, and, and he calls it a mystery. And what is the mystery of this godliness in Christ? It's something that dwells inside of us. And what it dwells inside of us is Jesus Christ. Paul states it clearly. What is the mystery, Paul? The glory of this mystery which is in Christ, which is the Jesus in you, the hope of glory. Here you go again. He calls it a mystery. He calls it the hope of glory. What is this hope? This hope is the future hope that we will dwell in heaven for eternity. That's the hope. So Jesus goes from being a mystery to being the hope of our glory. And the, the writer says, let me help you with this mystery. The mystery simply is Jesus dwells inside of us. This is the title, Christ in us. And we shift from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Remember what I told you that once they, would, they used to prophesy because the, prof, the Holy Ghost would come upon them. But when we get in the New Testament, the Holy Ghost is on the inside of us. I'm trying to make a point here, trying to make a point here uh, 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 why we are holy is because Jesus Christ dwells inside of us. Amen. He, he, he came that we may be like him, not only like him, that we may be holy. That's the mystery. That's the hope of glory. But Jesus came. This is what Jesus did. He, he came to indwell us for the benefit of our temporary lives on earth. Jesus didn't merely come to bring you to heaven. He came to bring heaven to you. And, and watch this. I like what he says, our temporary lives on earth. And we got to realize some, maybe if we get our mind more on this point, that this life on earth is temporary because we, 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 we got an eternal life in heaven. And Jesus died for us so that we may go to heaven for eternity. Uh, 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 the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we may have, those who believe may have eternal life. He is a substitute for us. Let me go back again. The wages of sin is death. The substitute died. We didn't have to die. Jesus died. He substitute for us that we may have eternal life. But he died a substitute, but you have to accept him and you have to believe in him. If you are saved, Jesus resides inside of you right now. If you are saved, Jesus lives inside of you. Remember the words. He says, I stand, my father and I stands at the door and knock. And if any man opens the door, we will come and sup within him. He's not going to force his way in you, but he will knock on the door of your heart so you can come in him. And watch this. Now, another point is he is the source of your transformation. This is Colleen. He comes in for a purpose. And that purpose is to change us. There is a transformation. Now watch this. Uh, transportation means to move from one point to another. Transformation means to stay in the point you in, point A, and change on the inside. 
and you don't have to go nowhere to change, but you will change. That's transformation. You, your change comes from the inside. That's important. Not from the outside. Amen? And, 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 and uh, uh, my little grandson is, 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 is excited about a caterpillar. And, and uh, he's excited about a butterfly. And I, I told my wife I was going to take him on the side and explain the, the butterfly and the caterpillar all the same. That's the same. And what happens is you see that slimy, uh, ugly-looking caterpillar to me, two things I can't stand. I can't stand, I can't stand a caterpillar. I can't stand a snake. You know, and that's from my biblical, that's from my biblical roots, y'all. But, but a caterpillar, slimy and ugly as it is, on the inside of that caterpillar is a butterfly. And sooner or later, that caterpillar turns into a butterfly. And all of it, it doesn't happen on the outside of the caterpillar. It happens on the inside. That's the same thing with us. It's the change that comes from the inside. Pastor, you're going to bore us with this? Yes, I will. There's a transformation that happens when Christ comes inside of you. We need to understand that and, and understand this good. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Remember what I told you? He goes from mystery to the hope of glory because Christ is in us. Our hope is that we're going to make it to heaven for eternity because Christ is in us. Watch this. When th there are some, some self-help books. The self-help books, the life coaching podcast, television shows, online articles that try to get you to adopt five things, maybe 10 things that, that would make you more productive, maybe 12 things that would set you free from addiction and anxiety. Amen. All of these experts supposedly have different ways to make you a better person, to have a better version of you. But do you know what that really is? All it is. Now, like this, y'all, it is called soul management. It is called behavior modification, that you are trying to manage and manipulate a better life for yourself by following the list, a list of do's and don'ts. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Do not do this. Do that. Uh, uh, do this. Don't do this. It, it is a self management. It is a soul management. It is behavior modification. That's not going to get you to heaven. Well, what will get me to heaven? Jesus that's in you. How is that, preacher? This is because, the, because of this now. The Jesus in you is transforming you, getting you ready to meet God. Watch this. It says that God, Jesus will come back for his bride and prepare his bride to be presented to his father. That means some transforming has to be, have to be happening. And, you know, we need to stop wasting ourselves, our time while waiting on Jesus. Watch and pray while waiting on Jesus. Some changes need to be done. And changes don't happen just once. If you are living only to change and that's it, then you in trouble. There's got to be some, trans some transformation. Amen? You're talking about a diet. You can have a diet and lose some weight. Get to the point where you want to lose weight. Dr. Evans said he lost it because he loved his family and he wanted to spend more time with his family. So he lost the weight. But as soon as you deviate from your diet the way come back. What that is, this is because the diet was about control and not about transformation. Did y'all catch the point here, y'all? Uh, when, when you change, and it's not about control, it's about transformation. Amen? Uh, uh, so, so, so you, watch this, he, uh, uh, he says this, and he hit me right where I wanted to be. My wife, when my wife and I left church Sunday, I told her, I said, got a Popeye's right there. <laughs> and we stopped and got Popeye's. Oh, that chicken was so good. <laughs> but if you eat Popeye's chicken every day, 
that's not good for you. Amen? But if you eat it every once in a while, a matter of fact, it'll taste better. It'll taste better if you eat it every once in a while. Amen? You may not have to run a marathon, but what you have to do is be consistent in your exercise. Can I get to another point? Here we go. Don't try to manage and manipulate a better life for yourself by following lists of do's and don'ts. This is because it's about control, not about transformation. Yes, I will repeat it. The secret of spiritual maturity. Where are you coming at with that, Pastor? Well, you got to grow, man. You have to grow. The, the, the question come, ask yourself, did I grow? I know I got saved 20 years ago, but did I grow in this spiritual life? Am I stronger, better than I was when I first got when I first got saved? The point is, it's not about just getting saved. It's about growing. It's about transforming. Uh, uh, so the secret to spiritual maturity as a believer and a follower of Christ is Jesus Christ. That's the answer. Amen. He is the reason and the provision for your spiritual completion as in Philippians 2 and 13. Watch this. It's simply for it is God which worketh in us, both of us, right? To will and to do his Whose pleasure? His good pleasure. That's the same thing as he gets the glory. He gets the honor. He gets the praise because he's the one that's doing the work. It's not us. I think Paul says it. Paul says somewhere, he says, it's not me, but it is the God that's in me that makes me who I am. That's why he said you ought to not get, take credit for whom credit belongs to because of your Christian life. That's why some people, man, they are so stuck on humility that if you tell them, oh, what great things you did for the Lord. Well, well, uh, boy, you preach good. You, 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 your teaching is so good. Well, it's not me. Pray for me and give God the glory. Uh, and and uh, uh, one, one, one of the basketball players, after they won the game, he said, to God be the glory. He said, we give him the honor. We give him the glory. To God, I could not do it without him. Amen? So, so, so he, that's what he says. And, 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 and Jesus wants more from you. Hey, listen to what Dr. Jeremiah, he explained something to me. I didn't, I didn't understand how it worked. I just stick it in the microwave and I eat it. He said, popcorn. He says, within that kernel, there is moisture in there. And what the microwave does heats up the moisture, and the moisture becomes steam, and steam put pressure on the walls of that kernel, and it pops. Amen? Did y'all catch that now? So it pops. This is the same thing about our spiritual life. If you got Christ in you, mm, uh, 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 this is what God is expecting of you as a child is for what he placed inside of you to become so hot within you that it expand and it press, put pressure on the flesh to a degree that the flesh could no longer contain God. So what happened? It starts to change. The spirit indwelling you controls you as you expands to be more and more like Jesus Christ. The more that the spirit get hot in you, the more control you're going to give over to Christ. And the more control you give up over to Christ, the more you be like him. So what's my objective? I want to be, come on, you done said it before in church. What you want to do, what you want to do, Christian woman, what you want to do, Christian man, I want to be more like Jesus. This is how you become more like Jesus. There's another point here. Got another point. Jesus doesn't want to be a part of your life. He wants to be your life. That's where he's at. That's where he's at. That's where he's at. He, he, he wants you to get to the point that you will, you will be just like him. So much, so much so that even that it may surprise even you. He said the things that used to bother you will not bother you anymore. Things that used to worry about when you're more like Christ, you no longer will worry about it. Things that you used to used to tempt you, you 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 will lose it will lose that shine and that lure to pull you to it toward them. Now understand something. Since you know that, the enemy also knows that. 
The enemy don't want you to concentrate on what's inside of you. He wants you to concentrate on what's on the outside. Come on. Come on. You didn't catch that. Catch that. Catch this. He wants you to concentrate on the circumstances and not concentrate on him that's inside of you that has given you power to change your circumstances or either to handle the circumstances around you. And listen to the minister who said, one preacher said, things are going to get bad. And I said to her, it's, it's already bad. You mean it's going to get worse. All right? So, well, I'm still in this world. What am I going to do? Well, the Christ in you says you can handle it. If you allow me to steam you up to the point where you be more like me, the more you get like Christ, the more you can handle it. What you mean? Can I, can I, can I, side, can I take a sidetrack right here? Jesus went through a lot. Listen to what Paul says, that he, there is nothing you're going to go through that he already went through. He is our high priest who's not too high for us to touch because he's been an example to us because he went through so much. Oh, they call me all kind of name. Well, they call Jesus name. Well, they lied on me. Well, they lied on Jesus. Well, they persecuted me. They persecuted him. In this world, you will have trials and tribulation. And I like what Jesus says, but turn it the other way. I, I have already overcome the world. So whatever you're going to go through, I've been there. And not only, what I like about Jesus, not only did he been there before I get there, but Jesus already done fix it before I get there. What you mean, preacher? He may not fix it. But he fixed me so I can stand it. It is still there. Listen to, what Dr. The, the, listen to what Dr. Evans said. He said he got a trash compactor. He says, the, uh, says Colleen, he said he pressed a button and it mashes the trash down. And the reason it mashes it down so he can put more trash in it. And I said, oh. I like to get me something fancy like that, so I don't have to go to the, 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 throw the trash away so quickly. But he mashed. Now he says the trash is still there. It still smells bad. It still looks bad. He said, but it really belongs in the the the, the comp the, in the trash can outside, uh, you know. But he said you can put more trash in it. <laughs> Come on, y'all. <laughs> he says you can put more trash. You mash it to put more trash in it, so before you throw it out. But he says this is how it is. God doesn't want you to make room for more trash. He wants you to replace the trash of your sinful nature with the presence and the purity of his Holy Ghost. And this has been, this, that means to conform with the image of Christ. So he don't want you to keep that trash, that sin trash in you. Throw it away by overcoming it with the purity of Jesus Christ. What a thing. Watch this. I got I to gotta get this part in. I got to get this part in. I, I, I told minister, I said, get ready, get ready. Galatians 1 and 20, I didn't give you that one, Brother Joe King, but it's certainly it, Paul is telling us something. We brought that up in our last book. But Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Watch what he did. Paul is saying something to see if I got this, see if I got it on the other side. Colossians 1 and 28, Paul gives us three words to answer our spiritual growth. Number one, preaching. Number two, teaching. Number three, admonishing. Watch this now. Watch what he says. He said, first of all, verse 28, we preach. Warning every man. That's proclamation. He said, then we teach. Come on, y'all. Every man in all wisdom. That's number two. Number three, we present every man perfect. That's admonishing to Jesus Christ. The proclamation of Jesus Christ must be a central passion of your pursuit. If you're a preacher, man, you ought to have a preaching passion. 
You ever watch those preachers one thing? That, look, look how they put it this way. I, that man loves, or that woman loves preaching. That means they have a passion for preaching. Amen? We, 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 preaching is proclamation, which means to proclaim. And who do we proclaim or what do we proclaim? Jesus Christ. And that means that we are all called to proclaim. We are all called to talk about Jesus. Let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. You're proclaiming. Look what the Lord has done for me. You're proclaiming. Why have, am I different than, from what I used to be? You are proclaiming. Let me tell you, you are proclaiming. Amen, somebody? And, and, and watch this. Not only do you proclaim, the second part is teaching. Uh, teaching has as its focus the deepening of the hearer's understanding. You're messing with people's mind here. You, you are improving their mind. You are improving their understanding when you teach them. Teaching includes explaining. Mm, here it is right there. To a greater level, the truth you wish to proclaim. You know what came to my mind when Jesus had resurrected? And, 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 and he had appeared to some people, but he appeared to two disciples. And they, they said, Jesus said to them, what's going on? They said, man, where you been? He said, uh, he said uh, tell me what's happening. He said, don't you know what they did to him called Jesus? How they crucified him? And, 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 and Jesus took it from there. He didn't preach, minister. He taught them about who he was. And, and let me tell you something, he was so good at it that when he got to the end of his teaching, they said, man, come with us. We want to hear more. What happened is, they, he appeared to them, asked them what's going on. They told him what's going on. And when he started teaching them, they realized something that he opened their understanding and made it clearer of why he did what he did. And they recognized who he was. This is in the resurrection, y'all. And then this, this, now the next part is uh, 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 to admonish. Admonish sound like to get you straight. I'm, I'm, I'm going to straighten you out. No. To admonish means to guide someone in their use of the information and the truth given to them. Watch this now. Uh, preaching means to proclaim the truth. Teaching means to explain the truth. But to admonish means to guide the truth. Paul got to that other part to make perfect, to present a perfect person to Jesus Christ. What Paul is sharing here in his desire is to see people be better, be transformed through Christ is the process we most officially call discipleship. What Jesus says, go and make what? Disciples, amen? So when you admonishing people and teaching them and preaching to them, you are following the command of Jesus Christ, his last commandment as he went to his father. When Jesus ascended into the heavens after his resurrection, he left a great commission, a mandate to do what? Teach others about him. Amen? That's a commandment. That's a commandment. That's a mandate. That's a commission that the Son of God, our teacher, our master, told us to do is to make other disciples. Look, he going to save them. But he's going to give us the gift to build them, to prepare them, to raise them, to grow them. He has given us the gift to do that. Amen? Living with a kingdom pursuit. I like that word. A king, that means go after it, begins through this awareness. It is an awareness directed internally to the indwelling of Christ in you. Tell him that's where it is. Right here. It's not me. It's him that's inside of me. Because when I got saved, watch this. The Holy Ghost came and dwelt on the inside of me. And the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the Father. Paul says in 1 Timothy, let me close. Paul says in 1 Timothy 4, that if you want to be godly, you must discipline yourself. 
What does discipline mean? The Greek word for discipline is related to our English word gymnasium. Well, I got excited about this one. Uh, 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 I got excited about this one. He said that you must go to the gymnasium. <laughs> this is Colleen. Dr. Evans says you, 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 you have to have, what's that you have at the gym? You got to... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you sign up for it, you, 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 you're part of it. You got a membership in the gymnasium. Amen. He, Dr. Jeremiah said it's the same. I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Dr. Evans said it's the same thing about us, that we got a membership with Christ. And for us to have a membership, we need to go to the gym. And to go to the gym, we got to exercise. It builds us. It, what, our, what our health teacher kept saying, she said about her, 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 her mother-in-law, she said when she started doing the exercise again and look at her in her 90s, she's still moving. So you on the battlefield for a long time, you got to keep doing certain things. Go to the gym and exercise. Spiritual fitness need to take priority over physical fitness. Paul says that. Paul says that he didn't say physical fitness is not good for you. He's just saying spiritual fitness is better than physical fitness. Why should you? Come on, y'all. <laughs> because you need spiritual fitness because physical fitness is not going to always stay with you. Amen? So you need to be spiritually. Physical fitness is profitable for a little while. That's what Paul says. But godliness is profitable for now and eternity. I close with this. Uh, uh, Dr. Evans must have been a spokesperson all the way. He gives a good example. He says that football, he said that one thing, what he, what he got on the field, one football, that football is everything. He said the players get paid millions of dollars to play with that one ball. <laughs> he said, what is the, what is the, what is all about? That football is not, a, it's not about the tackler, the, the, the runner, the kicker. What, what does the kicker run? Kicks. He kicks the football. What does the runner do? He runs with the football. What does the tackler do? He tackles the person with the football. It's all about the football. Come on, y'all. <laughs> y'all got to catch this point. It's all about the football. So as a child of God, we know that it is all about Jesus Christ. Amen? It's all about it. Man, that got me excited when he says millions of fans pays millions of dollars to come see what? People play with the football. And that's Jesus Christ. He is the one and the only one because it's really all about him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Because it is him. It is about him. It's him that's inside of us that's changing us and transforming us and making us and bringing us and blessing us and healing us and delivering us. It's him. It is him that's going to come back one day to get us and bring us and present us to you. It's him. You said that. My son, this is my beloved son in whom I am so delighted in. Hear, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear you him. What a mighty God you are. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for teaching and preaching and admonishing. We ask you all this in Jesus' name. Amen.